Let me show you how we can make use of Lightroom's masking tools to make objects like these hay bales look more 3D. To follow along you can download this raw file from the link in the description of the video and now let's jump into it. As always, before we start with the cool stuff we want to get the basic adjustments out of the way so we can get a better idea of what we want to do with the masking. So first off, let's open up the basic panel and I'm changing the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. This will bring up the saturation just a little bit and it also helps with the darker parts of the image by brightening them up a little bit. I'm gonna bring down the highlights so we can see more clouds in the sky. We're kind of fixing the overexposure by bringing down the highlights as you can see. This is looking much, much better already. At the same time, we can bring up the shadows or the blacks so we can see more details in the darkest areas. In fact, for this image, let's just raise the blacks a little bit. So reducing the highlights and increasing the blacks, we are basically reducing the overall contrast of the image. And especially by raising the blacks, this kind of creates a very, very soft and dreamy base look for the image. So that's actually not bad for this scene because I really like what this does. I'm also going to adjust white blends. I think at the moment this image is a little too cold, so let's bring up the temperature just a little bit, introducing some more warmth. And I think that's good enough. I still want to keep some of these blue tones up there in the top area while having these super warm tones just above the horizon. Then I do want to sharpen the details a bit by bringing up the texture, and I'm going to reduce clarity to kind of further improve this soft look I was talking about earlier. All right, and finally, we can bring up the vibrance and that should be our image after the basic adjustments. We can take a look at before real quick. You can see exposure wise, it looks much, much better, especially those bright areas in the sky. Color wise, it's also much more intense already. But before we continue with the color grading, of course, we want to work on the masks. So let's do that. Go ahead, open up the masking panel. I want to further work on the foreground without affecting the sky. So we're going to create a simple sky selection first. And then all we need to do for a foreground mask is to click the invert checkbox. That's looking like a pretty good mask. What I want to do in here is to further bring up the exposure, getting even more details out of the darkest areas. I'm also going to further bring up the shadows, which will just affect the very dark parts in the foreground. And I want to bring up the temperature, which will give the foreground more of a golden hour light situation. So right around here looks good to me. But the foreground is rather saturated. I don't think it looks good this way. So what I want to do is to bring down the overall saturation here. I'm going to reduce it quite a lot but right around here should be fine. Okay, now this mask did help quite a bit already, but you can see the foreground is still a little bit flat. We're going to work on that in a minute, but for now let's also target these hay bales and we're going to use an objects mask for that. Make sure the rectangle select mode is active right here with this icon. And now we can just draw a rectangle around those hay bales. Uh, this mask is not perfect. You can see that in the bottom area of that hay bale, but it's okay for our purpose. I'm going to add another objects mask and let's target the other hay bale like this. Perfect. Now, what I want to do here is to simply further bring up the shadows, revealing more details of those very dark areas, just like that. Now the foreground looks quite nice exposure wise. Next, I want to work on the sky a little more. So let me create a color range mask and I'm going to try and target these blue areas in the sky right here. We're going to target a little more here. So I'm going to bring up the refine slider, I think. And I also want to subtract a radial gradient and I'm going to take away a big part from the center like this. The reason is I want to use this mask to make the top part darker and in turn, just create a more dramatic looking sky. Now, after setting up this mask, I'm going to bring down the exposure just a little bit. I really don't want to overdo it. So right around here looks really, really nice. 
Then let me create a, another color range mask. And this time I'm going to target these warm tones in the sky. This is looking pretty good. I still want to make sure I'm only affecting the sky. So I'm clicking on those three dots, choose intersect mask width and choose select sky. This way, nothing in the foreground will be selected. Now, what I want to do with this mask is I want to further bring up the temperature, introducing some more warmth to those already warm areas. And I also want to bring up the saturation, giving these areas some more color. So just like that. Perfect. I'm also going to add a radial gradient for the center right here. This is the brightest spot of the sky and I want this area to kind of emit some glowing effect. So I'm making sure this radial gradient is overlapping darker areas. So the hay bales on each side and the forest in the foreground right here. Now I'm going to bring up the blacks. I'm also going to increase the whites just a little bit. Then let me bring down the dehaze. Again, this helps to emulate this glow effect really nicely. And I think we can introduce some more temperature on this spot. So let's bring up the temperature a bit. All right, I think that looks great. Let's turn off this mask for a moment so you can see the difference from before without the glow effect to after. Wonderful, very subtle. Uh, let me create one more linear gradient for the sky, covering the top part once more because I want to further darken the top area right here. I'm going to darken it by bringing down the shadows. And let's also bring down the blacks. This way the brighter clouds won't be changed and we are adding more contrast this way. Perfect. And now back to our flat looking foreground. What we want to do is to add light on these hay bales, but we want to add it in a kind of natural way. So the light is coming from in this direction and looking at this hay bale, it would probably hit the upper edge and maybe a little bit on the right side. So it, it doesn't have to be a hundred percent accurate or close to reality. And I'm going to do this by creating another objects mask. Again, using the rectangle select mode, just draw the rectangle around that hay bale. And here we have the selection. Now click on those three dots right here, choose intersect mask width and choose brush. And what we're doing now is to kind of create an area which we want to brighten up. So I want to brighten up this area right here. We are just targeting a very, very small area. That should be enough. The rest of this hay bale basically lies in the shadows. So we don't need to make this part darker. Now what I'm going to do is to again, bring up the shadows for this area. And you can see how this will create this light effect. Let's raise it like this. All right, I'm also going to bring up the whites very, very gently. Since this is supposed to emulate the golden light hitting that hay bale, we also need to bring up the temperature to give this a warmer light effect. So something like this. Let's turn off this mask real quick so we can see the difference from before to after. Now, as I said, this is not supposed to be close to reality. Of course, there is no light hitting that backside of that hay bale, but it gives kind of the illusion of it. And this way we can add more depth to the image. We could probably adjust this mask a little more. This might be a bit too much right here, but the very top of the hay bale, that's the important area. So again, let me turn off this mask and you can get an idea of the difference. Wonderful. Now let's work on the second hay bale. Again, I'm going to use a objects mask, draw the rectangle, and then we want to intersect with a brush. And I'm going to cover pretty much all the front right here, because I think it will look better if this is a bit brighter here. Again, it's not really natural or close to reality, but it just helps giving the image more of a 3D effect. So again, let's bring up the shadows. And I'm going to bring up the whites. Let's see, I think right around here looks good. I do want to subtract with the brush just a little bit to make it look a little more natural. 
maybe I actually need to add a brush and kind of target this area a little more right here. But I think this looks great. I'm really, really happy how this is looking. So let me show you the difference from before. This is the image with just the basic adjustments applied to after. The image with the masking added on top. And as always, the masking is responsible for a huge transformation of the image. Now let's continue with a little bit of color grading. And we are going to start this in the color mixer. I want to work on the hue and I do want to change the green tones of the foreground because I don't like how this green color works together with the sky. It's kind of not pleasing to look at. So I want to change that by making the greens more yellowish. So let's bring down the green hue. And I'm also going to bring down the yellow hue. I also want to head into the saturation tab and I want to bring up the orange saturation to make the sky just a little more vibrant. I'm going to bring down the yellow saturation though, especially for the foreground to be not as saturated. And I'm going to bring up the blue saturation so we have some nice color balance with the colder color tones on top. Okay, then we can head into the color gradient cap for some split toning. Here I want to start with the highlights and we can go really, really crazy. But in this case, I'm going to keep it rather subtle. So let's first set up the hue. And I'm going to try setting up the hue to a color that matches the sky right now. So some in the orange range right here. And I'm going to bring up the saturation just a little bit. As I said, we can go crazy here, but I want to keep it subtle. So let's go with something more neutral around 28 points. That looks perfect. And I want to keep the color balance between the warm and cold color tones. So I'm going to head into the midtones and I'm going to apply a cold color tone to the midtones because those mostly are located right here on top and in the foreground. So let's set up the hue. So somewhere around here and I'm going to bring up the saturation slightly. This introduces this cold color right here in the shadows of the foreground and in the top without affecting the warmer spot in the center. So I think this looks pretty nice. Finally, we can also head into the calibration tab. Where we can tweak the colors a little more by bringing down the blue primary hue, which will make the sky colors look a bit more intense. Just be careful since this is a very powerful slider. I'm also going to bring up the saturation here. In fact, let's also bring up green and red saturation, just like this. Wonderful. Now we're almost done with the Lightroom adjustments. I just want to add a bit of sharpening in the details tab. And as always, I'm using the same settings as for every image. I'm going to bring down the radius. I'm adding a lot of detail. Then I'm applying masking. This is different from image to image. I just want to affect the most important parts with the sharpening. So it's important to hold down the Alt key while you, while you adjust the masking slider. And now let's increase the amount of sharpening. Done. Let's compare to before real quick and you can see it's a huge different exposure wise. It's, it's looking much, much, much better. And we do have a much stronger 3D effect thanks to the adjustments of the foreground. Now, there are a few more things I want to do, which I can do in Lightroom, like getting rid of these houses in the distance. It's just easier to do in Photoshop. So I'm going to right click on the image, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. First up, Let's create a backup layer by hitting Ctrl J. And now I'm going to zoom in and we are using the remove tool and just brushing over all these houses in the distance. I want this image to be clean and rather minimalistic. So these houses in the back are rather distracting for that purpose. Not sure what happened here. Just brush over it once more and again, just fill it. All right, that looks much, much better. If you want, we could adjust the color some more, making the whole image warmer by adding a photo filter adjustment layer. You can see this has a very nice effect on the overall colors. Of course, it will take out some blue tones of the sky at the top, but I think this looks pretty nice this way. And we could maybe add a bit of glow. So create a new layer, switch the blending mode to hard light, grab the brush tool, make sure it's nice and soft. And I'm going to grab a color from the bright 
spot right there. And let's bring down the brush opacity to 10%. And now I'm going to paint in a few times, creating this very soft looking glow effect. Wonderful. And that's it for editing this image. I hope the masking part of this tutorial was helpful and interesting. Of course, if you have questions left or if you want to add anything to the editing process, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.